the biggest hack and the biggest trick of all the biggest photographer like Peter Leake, Ansel Adams, Clyde Butcher, Alan Schaller, whoever you wanted, is masking. The only difference between this and this is only dodge and burn and masking. That's the only difference. Masking is a reason why I got Lightroom in the first place. It's just a game changer. In this video, I'm gonna reveal hacks, secrets, and tips that took me 10 years to learn on how to do masking in Lightroom. I'm gonna shoot things which you've never seen anywhere on masking that's gonna blow your mind. If you stand till the end, your knowledge of Lightroom is gonna 10x. Come on, 10x my knowledge of masking in 10 minutes? How is that possible? It is possible. Just be focused and watch till the end. Come on, Frenchie. What are you talking about? Secrets and hacks. No, 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 I am serious. This will change your life. It's amazing. My name is Serge Germany. I'm a French photographer from the amazing, the incroyable city of Paris, France. And I make a tutorial every week to try to make you an award-winning photographer. That is my mission. I want you to be the photographer you always wanted to be. That's nice, Frenchie, but come on. What are you really doing here? No, really, I love 12 people. Okay, so let's get started without any further ado. It's gonna be amazing. Masking has existed uh, since a long time. This book from Ansel Adams, which is really hard to read, uh, talks about the negative and how he does something called dodge and burn. Now, dodge and burn is the ability to make your photo darker or brighter at certain areas. But with Lightroom, it got crazy because you can change color locally. You can make your sky different. You will see, it's a complete game changer. Anybody you can name that is a big name in photography does a lot of masking in a photo to get the colors, the darkness and the brightness exactly how they want it. This is probably the most important video of the year for you to watch. Please don't brush it off, watch it and practice on it. It is doing what Ansel Adam was doing already 50 years ago. Okay, so we're gonna start with this first photo from New York. So this is the basic retouching that I did in this photo. That's the usual retouching, the global retouching. But now with the masking, you go from this to that. Look at this, before, after, before, after. Just how we changed the light and got everybody to look inside of the photo. It's insane. And here comes the sun. Here comes the sun. Ba -na -na -na. We are, uh, first, what I want to do is I want to darken a bit the top of the photo. So this is my first hack for you. If you use a gradient, so you click here, you click and drag, and that's going to make a gradient. In red here is what's going to be influenced. Now, if you don't see red, be, make sure you are on color overlay, not on color on black and white. It's going to be weird. Image on black and white, all of that is really weird. Go to color overlay so you can see in red what's going to happen, like what is going to be affected, okay? Then what you do is you lower the exposure. And now that value here, you see that red dot here? That value is going to be at full force from the top of the photo to that red dot. And from the red dot to the white dot, it's going to be on a gradient. Okay, so I want it like this, but we have a big problem. Nous avons un problème, mesdames et messieurs. We have a big problem. And look at this. You can see here, if I go before and after the mask, I like what it does on the sky, but I don't like what it does on the building. Is there a way around this? Is there a way around this? Yes, there is. Absolutely, monsieur. So what you do is you go three dots, intersect mask with sky. Now, I'm not, not going to press. Three dots intersect mask with skies. What that's going to do, are you ready? Boom. It's that it's going to make this brighter. Now, our gradient is only influencing the sky. And that is huge. That is one hack like crazy. Okay? But we're not done. We are going to add a little gradient here and lower that. So same idea. Uh, because the eyes goes to the brightest part of the photo. I want the eyes to go inside of the photo. But we are not done. We are not done. I have a lot of more hacks to show you. The next one we're going to do is we're going to take a circle here. So same idea. Uh, it's called a radial gradient. You take a big circle. And I'm going to put it, actually not that big. Let's make it a bit smaller. And I'm going to put it around here. Because there was a little bit of magenta, a little bit of magenta in the photo that got lost. It's not cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some magenta here and some yellow for the just for the bottom part here. But the problem, again, it's going everywhere. I just wanted to recover what was lost, maybe add a bit of saturation just on this part. But now it's adding it everywhere. But same thing, three dots, intersect mask with, with sky. Yes, intersect mask with sky. And look, boom. Now it's going to use AI. Check this out. It's going to use AI, and it's only going to be behind the bridge. Only behind the bridge. So we're going to go behind the bridge. If you look at it, this mask now, hardly does nothing. All it does, 
Look, look behind the Empire State Building before, after. It adds a bit of light on the Empire State Building, okay? And now comes the real magic. I mean, I'm already kind of happy. Come on, like, this is where we came from. This is where we are. I'm already very happy. But this is the magic of masking. We're going to go here and click on Landscape. Now, Landscape is going to use AI to analyze your photo and pre propose different masking for you. So we have uh, sky, you can see here. Yes, sir, I want the sky. Architecture, which is like basically the buildings. Vegetation, which is the trees. You can see here it's in red what it's doing. I'll take vegetation. Artificial ground, absolutely. And natural ground. Natural ground is, I don't know, it's the same thing. Let's just take it. And you, you very important, très important, you take create five separate masks. Create mask. Boom. And now we take them one by one. Sky. So what I advise you to do is just start with the exposure. Do you like it brighter or darker? I think I like it a bit brighter. Good. Take the architecture. Do you like it, like it brighter or darker? In this case, maybe a slightly brighter can be kind of cool. I have an idea. So a little brighter. Okay, good. And then um, I'm going to add a bit of clarity, but only on the building. And that's the magic. Clarity only on the building. It's going to give like a little je ne sais quoi, un petit je ne sais quoi, that's going to make it really interesting. Okay. And uh, maybe not that much, just a little bit more. But now we, I still want to focus more the eyes inside of the photo, which is fine. Vegetation. Let's see here. Do we make it brighter? Yeah, a little bit brighter. I want people to look inside of this photo. Good. And artificial ground. Do we make it brighter or darker? I want to make it darker because I want people to look inside. Okay, good. Uh, natural ground. Well, that's the same thing. That's the tree again. Okay, so now look at this. You can see here by clicking the eyes, you can see before and after the, uh, the sky, before or after the building. Or if you want to see all the masking we've done, you've got like a, a master, a master eye here. Are you ready? Before, after. Not crazy. Uh, look at this. Before, after, before, after. Just how we changed the light and got everybody to look inside of the photo. It's insane. It's insane. But that's not all. Uh, here it's a little too bright, so I'm going to add one more gradient. I really want people to look inside. One more gradient here, and I'm going to lower the exposure. Okay? Now, I know it's a lot, but it's amazing. I mean, look at this. Uh, before, after, and before the masking, and after the masking. It changes everything. Masking is a reason why I got Lightroom in the first place. It's just a game changer. That is why this software mwah, is shift cast. It's incredible. So I advise you to practice this. It's, you know, it takes a bit of practice, okay? But I want to show you something on this photo here. By the way, I have an amazing coaching program. Amazing, okay? It's one-on-one, -on -one, but I cannot take everybody. We had a lot of application last month. I only take people which really love landscape and cityscape. If you're into like uh, studio work, do not apply. The link is under the video. I have freed up a few spots next week. I'd love to see you work with me and my team and see if we're a good fit for each other. You have to be coachable. This is really to make you an award-winning photographer. For example, Sherry Keen made 12 magazine cover after the coaching program, JT 38 international awards, and Jacob Boris a million pound in sales in three years, and Clifton Haley $60,000 of sales on Etsy. It's changing people's lives. That coaching program is called the Institute of Photography. Again, I contact everybody. The link is under this video. Okay, now let's go to San Francisco, San Francisco, because I want to show you brushes. So first, we're going to go here and we are going to go to the basic settings very quickly. We open the uh, shadows, we bring on the highlights, we do the black, you know, we do the white, the classic. Sh the, on this one, I think I want to go to shade on the white balance so that it's a bit warmer and add a bit of magenta. Okay, and let's make it a bit more contrasty. Uh, it's already pretty good, but like we need to do a lot of things with the masking here, a lot of things. So, um, First of all, let's uh, make this photo straight. So we're going to take the angle tool and follow the horizon. Boom. And then we're going to go here, 16 by 9, because that's my, you know, and think of the rule of third, like one third of sky, two third of water. You don't have to respect it completely. I don't want to cut that cloud, but okay, I like that. But there's the colors are kind of off. The colors are kind of off, and we're going to see if we can use the masking to help us. So we're going to go here. And I'm going to go to landscape like we did before. 
And we're going to select the sky, the mountains, and the water. Okay, good. Water is actually not the water, but it's fine. I don't know why it's not selling anything, which is fine. And I'll show you how to correct the mask. So sky, that's a sky. Do I make it darker? I think I want to make it slightly. Nah, I'm not going to. Maybe a bit more blue now. No, I'm not going to do anything on the sky. It's fine. Very little. Mountains, I think I want to make them a bit darker. Yes. And water, uh, a bit more blue on the water. But you see, it's missing all of that. It's missing all of that. So what you can do is you can go here, add, and in this case, let's take a brush. We're going to take a brush, and we're going to add a brush on this one. I'm going to make the feather about 50%, flow and density all the way. And now whatever value we have here, which is just a bit of blue, we can add it to our mask, and we're going to paint this. I want to, so I'm painting this, okay, with the brush. Okay, that's how you can correct the mask, by the way. Okay, so now we're good. So now I want to do I want to do two things. That's very important. I want to add a little gradient here on top. Let me show you. This is before the mask. This is after. So far, so good. But we're going to go further. We're going to go here. We're going to add a bit of a gradient on the top of the sky. And I want to bring back some blue. Think a bit of blue and maybe make it a bit darker on top. Okay, good. And then I want to do the same thing that we did earlier where I take a radial gradient. I'm going to make it around the bridge because there was a bit of magenta, which I lost. So here's the gradient. I don't know why I lost my line. Okay, perfect. Here it is. And I'm going to add a bit of yellow and a bit of magenta. I'm kind of overdoing it at first, always, around the bridge. And I'm going to do, remember, three dots, intersect mask with sky. Three dots, intersect mask with sky. Boom. And look at that. Before, now it's behind the bridge. And if you think it's too strong, you can just lower the value. I like it strong, maybe add a bit of saturation. That's kind of cool. That is kind of cool. And uh, in case there is some dust, I love using this new feature here, which is if you click uh, here and click on dust, click on apply, it's going to study the photo and see if there is any dust. In this case, there was no dust. Oh, because I shot it with the Leica. The Leica Q3 never has dust because it's one lens. I'm sorry. I think it's my screen. That was not good. Um, I think there's too much negative space here, so I'm going to Crop this a little bit more. Let's get a little closer to the photo like that. I'm liking this. Now I want to show you one more thing about brushes. So brushes, if you add a brush here, and let's say you put the value, the, the, the feather all the way down and flow and density all the way up, and you add a bit of exposure, you can always make your brush big or small by using the middle mouse. That's why you need to have a middle mouse if you use Lightroom, very important. You can find them for almost nothing today. Now check this out, if I brush now, Look what's going to happen. Not very realistic, right? But if I just put the feather all the way to 100 and I brush again next to it, it's a bit better, but it's still too strong. But now, if I lower the flow and the density a bit more and I brush next to it, ah, it's a bit better, but still too visible. But now, if I lower the exposure a little bit and I brush next to it, now it's hardly visible, and that's what we want. So I'm going to delete that. I'm going to add a brush. And flow and density in the 70s. I was born in 1970, a very good year. And then feather all the way, a little bit of exposure. And you see here, the little shine from the water. I'm just going to make it more shiny, but don't... Shh, dites la personne, don't tell anybody. And here also, here also. Don't do it everywhere, just in some parts. And I'll give you a trick. If, it's, if you see it right away, you know you've gone too far. Look at the before and after. Before, after. It's too visible. So just lower the exposure. But honestly, the best test is you come the next day, you come the next day and you look at your photo and you're like, hmm, did I go too far or not go too far? And boom, uh, you, will, you will see right away. Now, I want to show you something that's really cool and it's totally free. I have a book coming up on Amazon uh, called London and I always use my AI preset to, as a base to retouch. So I'll show you these two photos here, or let's even take this one. For example, look at this. If I use my sunset preset, I do one click. Okay, it looks kind of better, but check this out. If I go here and I check my black point and my white point, only three sliders, and I play around with the white balance, so maybe a bit more magenta. Uh, you know, I go here, I'm going to take out the dust automatically. You know, you have to do a bit of work. The, the preset will give you a good base to work with. And then you go here, but they're totally free. You can download them. 
It takes two seconds to install. It works on Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, Camera Raw. You can even put them on your phone. I use them on my phone all the time. Uh, actually, uh, you know, I shoot raw and I use them on my phone. They're amazing. And then, you know, why am I giving them for free? Because I want to give you value. The whole idea of this video is to give you value. Maybe one day you'll come to one of my workshops. Maybe you'll come to one of my coaching sessions. We don't know. Maybe in a moment of generosity, you're going to buy one of my courses. That would be insane. Anyway, 90% um, of people don't buy ever anything, which is fine. You don't have to. But if you really want to be an award photographer, come and check out the coaching and the courses, please. Okay, cool. Look at this. Three... And like one thing I can do is I can, I'll show you something. So if I create a virtual copy and I restart this photo and I use like my sun's, no, let's do like blue hour. It's a blue hour, blue hour shot. Okay. I do my black point. I do my white point. Okay. On this one, I'm going to, you always have to change the white balance. So I think this one, I'm going to make it a lot, it's too yellow. Maybe it's a bit too much magenta, something like that. Oops, no, that was too far. Okay, and then I still need to make it straight, but like I got a good base to work with, you know, I just have to do my little gradient that I showed you here, but I, I always start with my preset because, it, you know, I don't have to open the shadow, bring down the highlight, blah, blah, blah. There's like 27 actions that the preset will do for you, but you see right away I get a photo that's kind of cool, you know, not as good as the one we worked on for like 20 minutes, and even that's debatable. Uh, and we got it in four clicks, you know. So check out the presets too. Check out this video on how I do colorful photos in Provence, French Riviera. It's also going to learn you so much about composition, starting now.